This third training course on the Bet Builder, I'm going to be looking at some advanced stuff it can do, some super advanced stuff. So I'm going to have a look at um, some different logic. We've done and and or, so we're going to have a look at not and most, some um, probability distributions called Poisson and Skellum. I'll discuss what they are and how you can use them. Um, but we'll start with drift steam tracking. Okay, so um, when using the Bet Builder, when using the Player XG tool, the Match XG tool, the Game Center, they'll all give you static lines of any game. And you you don't have any inkling if those lines are steaming or if they're drifting. Now, in our trackers, you kind of do know because things that are plus EV tend to be teams that or players or horses that have steamed in. Nothing's ever priced up to begin with as plus EV. It kind of is priced up with a bit of juice, mostly about 9-10%, depending on the market. And then over time, it'll steam into plus EV. The coupons tracker specifically works exactly on this principle. Shop coupon football teams are identified by those that have steamed in the most. Betting on steamers is attractive. It's more attractive than betting on drifters because if you bet on a steamer, it's more likely to keep on steaming than it is to drift. It can drift, but it's more likely to keep on steaming. And if you catch it in the middle of the steam, you're going to beat the closing line. Beating the closing line is one of the fundamental principles of value betting. You can't do that on the bet build. There's nowhere on here that will tell you, you know, what game is on tomorrow. FIFA Women's World Cup. We've got Nigeria versus Canada. We see here that um, over three goals is 4.57. Has that steamed in? Has it drifted? We do not know. And Nigeria women are 10.3. Has that steamed in? Has that drifted? We do not know. Okay. But we can monitor steam drift tracking. Any market that we want. So I've got Nigeria women here. Um, and I'm going to just tick a box there. Steam drift track. It gets rid of the book. It gets rid of the odds. Um, and I can save that. And that's now going to save to my tracker. 10.3. In the 299 seconds since I've up, uh, loaded the bet tracker, it's actually gone to 10.29. So since opening the bet tracker in the 300 or so seconds, it has steamed in by, well, 100.08% EV, 0.01. Not really a steamer. You'd want this to be 105, 110% to show that it was. Similarly, we could do Canada. We could do anything. We could do... Um, either team to win and both teams to score and we could save that um it's now 3.8 i'm going to update the data on the bet tracker yeah we can see it has updated to 3.8 so from the moment that i have started tracking this we've already had a little bit of movement in the xg it looks like the xg from nigeria has slightly improved based on what the markets are telling us here we can do um, handicaps if we wanted to. So if I pick up, for example, I don't know, an American football game, some, um, you know, Clemson T Tigers, Tigers versus Florida State. Have a look at Clemson Tigers minus 1.5. I can track that. Steam drift tracking. Save that. Got to give it a name. If there's no save button, it's because there isn't a name. So Clemson Tigers, minus 1.5. Save that, and I'm tracking this. There's my um, handicap tracking. That's gone up at 1.83, 1.83, so that's 100%. Um, so I can use any of the bookie bashing databases, player stats, player XG. Uh, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to pick up one of the women's games tomorrow. Um, let's have a look at the USA game, in fact. Um, what's her name? Rip and Ho. There's a lot of Thai ladies here, or Vietnam ladies. Uh, Megan Rip and Ho. So maybe her to score first in the match. At the moment, we make 4.1. Let's reset the title, um, and we can save that. So she's going up at 4.1, 4.1. Also, we could um, monitor any Betfair exchange bet. So um, what have we got on just now? We've got the golf. We could pick up um, the Open Championship and have a look if any of these guys are going to steam in to win. It is in play just now, so you would expect some movement, um, and that's going to be 
based on how well Rahm is doing. But again, I'm just going to save John Rahm to win. And similarly, we can have a look at um, best bookmaker price as well. So any of these can be sort of added. Um, uh, let's pick up a basketball game. Mexico versus Colombia. Total points. Over 150.7, you know. Columbia, oh, 150.7. Oh, 157 it was, sorry. Um, and monitor that. So we can monitor anything from best bookmaker price to exchange prices to in-house bookie bashing database lines, things like that. So they will all be tracked in real time. Um, so that is Steam Drift Tracking. And if you want to go and see those, open up your bet tracker and then turn your public tracker off. And you'll see all of your bets there. And you can monitor which ones are steaming in the most over time. Um, uh, so that is Steam Drift Tracking. And then an advantage of this is that if you want to attack the Game Center or the Player XG, you could maybe be monitoring a load up here uh, ahead of time. And you can pick off the teams or the games or the 0.2.5 or so on and so forth um, where teams are steaming in as opposed to drifting. So that's one advantage of it. Let's have a look at something else. Let's have a look at another metric. Let's have a look at, again, Women's World Cup. I'm going to have a look at the not metric here. I'm going to pick up um, Nigeria to win 10.29. Let's pick up Canada to win 10.1.45. Uh, so instead of them to win, we could use and or or if we want to combine, or we could just have not. So I'm selecting not now, and Canada not to win is 3.24. That's just the other side of 1.45. So if you take the reciprocal of 1.45, you get the probability. One minus that probability is 3.24. Um, and that's for Canada not to win. So that's the draw or Nigeria. Again, if we pick up Nigeria not to win, they're 1.11, which ties in with the fact that they're about 10.0 to win. So um, we can use not if we just want to see the other line of some other line of somewhere. Sometimes um, you, you just might get some crazy bets that. You just want to see the other side, uh, a team not to score, a player not to score. I mean, you could do under one goals for a player not to score. But sometimes if there's multiple options, for example, in a horse race, um, I could pick up a horse or in the golf, I could pick up one of the golfers and we could have um, other markets golf. Um, it's going to be pretty low odds just now. But in the Open Championship, if I pick up um, the winner as one of the favourites, like Rory McIlroy, Rory McIlroy not to win is 1.17, okay? And I can add in another not if I want to. So um, the not metric just takes the other side of the bet. Um, and if I want to switch it back from not to and, I can just click up here. And I've got Rory McIlroy at 7.002 win, 1.17 on the other side. Simple as that. Okay, let's have a look at another metric. Let's have a look at um, who's going to get the most goals are um, tomorrow from Nigeria and Canada, Philippines and Switzerland, and Spain, Costa Rica. So which team's going to get the most goals here? So I'm going to pick up Nigeria, and I'm now going to choose the most metric, okay? So the period's the match, and I'm going to choose Canada as the second team, and then I'm going to add in another most. And for the third team, I'm going to choose the second, the third match, Philippines, Switzerland, for the fourth match, I'll choose the other team, Philippines. Can't imagine they're going to get the most. For the fifth match, I'm going to choose the... For the fifth team, I'm going to choose Spain. And for the sixth match, I'm going to choose Costa Rica. Okay? So the very first team that we selected was Nigeria. And this is the team to have the most. Um, and Nigeria to have the most goals tomorrow is 578 to 1. So we could have picked any match here. And this is for Nigeria to have the clear number of most goals. So not tied, nothing like that. We could split the draws if we want to. And if we were to split the draws, it's a little bit more likely. So if they're going to get the most, but it could be tied, it's 208.63. And also we can change the winning row. So we can change it from Nigeria to Canada having the most goals, and that's down at 13.09. I bet Spain's probably the favourite. I don't actually know, so let's have a look at row five. And there we have Spain at 1.35 to have the most goals tomorrow. If the draws are split, if they're a clear winner, 
they have 1.47. We work this out by using the XG for each team, and then we use a Poisson distribution to work out how many goals they're going to get in the game. Um, and then we use a Skellum distribution, which incorporates the Poisson distribution to basically count up you know, the number of times that they're going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 goals compared to all of the rest of the teams. So it is a Skellum probability distribution with our in-house um, lines that are being used. We could change match to first half, second half, or any custom of the game. So that's how most works. Now, you can use any of the teams or even players, shots and target, things like that, that are in the bookie bashing database for most. But what if you've got your own? Well, let's reset and have a look. Under static variable, we can add um, lines that aren't in the exchange, the bookmaker price, or the bookie bashing lines. Sometimes, for some reason, I just want to multiply a bet odds by two. I have various reasons for wanting to do this. It's kind of not important why, but if I wanted to, I can add a basic um, multiplier of two onto any of the odds here. Um, and so if I was to add in, I don't know, Nigeria to win tomorrow in the 10.00, by having the static variable as two, that means it's multiplying it by two. If I just show you that, bookie bashing lines, Women's World Cup, Nigeria to win. There they are. So there you go. So doubled from 10 to 21.09. So that's just a basic multiplier. We've also got two more static variables, and we can use these if we have our own lines. So let's say you've got an expectancy for one player or one team of so many goals. Now, bear in mind in Poisson, we need to be counting up by numbers of one. It has to go zero, one, two, three, four. Technically, they have to be independently distributed, meaning the the odds of getting two are the same as from one are the same as the odds of getting one from zero. It's not technically true for a lot of players, but we can use this base assumption in a lot of modeling. Okay, if it's rugby and the amount of points that a team is going to get, this isn't going to work because you don't go zero, one, two in rugby. You go zero, three, seven. You don't get points for a conversion. So be bear in mind if we're using the Poisson, we do need to be using it for expectancies where we're counting 0, 1, 2, 3, number of 180s, things like that. And let's say our mean, which is our expectancy. Now, you've got to get this from wherever you want. If you want an expected goals, you could pick it up from any of the bookie bashing databases. But let's say we're expecting 2.4 goals in the match. And we want to know what the odds of over 2.5 are. That's our target. The odds of over 2.5, given a mean of 2.4, are 2.32, right? So that's the Poisson distribution. The Skellum distribution is the same, but it's most of two different participants, okay? So participant one has an expectation of 2.4. Participant two has an expectation of 2.6. Um, and we can add a team. Let's, let's do that. Add team 2.8. So ties are split just now, which means um, uh, the tie is not an option. That means that dead heat rules will apply at the bookmaker. So the bookmaker may say, who's going to win, A, B, or C? And there's no option of a draw. So it uh, is split. If the draw is possible, we can simply select that. And we now see that participant zero with an expectancy of 2.4 has odds of 4.78. And the draw is going to be 4.36. We could price up a football match like this. If we've got our two XGs for our two teams, we can get the draw odds and the odds of home win and away win. Um, out of the Skellum distribution. We've got three participants here, and I can change the participants. So let's say I want to know what the odds of participant two is. I can just change to that. We've got 3.27. Why is this useful? Well, let's say we want to know um, the premiership team with the most number of goals in a particular Saturday afternoon, and we don't want to use the bookie bashing line. We've got our own expectations. We can use this Skellum calculation to do that. Or let's say... Um, any problem where we are counting in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 format, that's how we're scoring, and we've got our own expectations and we've got a number of participants, we can use the Skellum calculator and we can choose whether a draw is possible or whether dead heat rules apply to work out who is going to have the most number of goals, 180s, of things based on the means that we give to that. So that's just a few of the more advanced stuff that the bookie bashing calculator can do. For this stat static variable, 
for Skellum, for Poisson. That's where you've got your own expectancies. You need to bring them in to the calculator and populate them. But if you've got those, this is a really fantastic way of estimating what the probability is. And if the bookmaker is offering a particularly bizarre bet, or, you know, it could be who's going to have more goals, the Bundesliga or the Premiership, you could do that in the bookie bashing calculator. But if you've got that in your own expectations for those leagues, use this part of it, the static variable in Skellum, and it will give you the results.